Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is the Tico SG2 PLR client programming software. Our objective is to familiarize ourselves with a Tico SG2 PLR client programming software. We'll learn to navigate the software environment, enter a basic ladder logic program, simulate the program, and transfer it to a device and monitor its operation. Note this lecture is not intended to be a thorough review nor an endorsement of the Tico SG2 PLR family but rather serves to familiarize the viewer with just one of the many inexpensive basic programmable logic controllers and programming software options commercially available. Recall in the example PLC, Tico SG2 PLR lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we familiarized ourselves with a representative example of an inexpensive basic programmable logic controller, the Tico SG2 10HRA PLR. During the course of that lecture, we programmed the device using the ridiculously small dedicated buttons and LCD screen on the front panel and learn the hard way that this is a time-consuming and frustrating task. Today, we'll learn to use the Tico SG2 PLR client programming software that makes the manual entry method feel hopelessly ponderous in comparison. Tico offers a fully functional version of this software for free on their website. While free, the software isn't particularly feature-rich. However, it gets the job done. If you've already got a copy of the Tico SG2 client programming software available or are capable of downloading it, by all means do so, fire it up, and follow along. The Tico SG2 client programming software is proprietary software used to program devices in the Tico SG2 PLR family only. Other manufacturer devices necessitate the use of different software. While proprietary in nature and limited to only a handful of devices, most of the features as presented in this lecture are universal in nature and only subtle differences exist between different manufacturers' programming environments. Ultimately, well-designed programming software will allow a user to do four things. Write, save, edit, and manage programs, simulate programs, transfer programs to a device, and monitor a device running a program. Not only does it use the programming software like the Tico SG2 client programming software greatly simplify the program entry and editing process, the ability to work on a program offline without stopping the PLC reduces production downtime. Additionally, simulation makes it possible to test and verify functionality before going live with real-world hardware in a production environment. The version of the Tico SG2 client programming software I'm using today is version 3.37. Older or updated versions might feature subtle differences. The software initiates operation with a small window featuring rather stupid-looking cartoon characters. Quickly press the New Ladder Document button on the left to minimize your exposure to this foolishness. The software starts with a blank workspace. The menu and toolbar on the top are the principal means one uses to navigate the Tico SG2 client programming software. Hovering over any button will show a pop-up description of the button in question. The bottom features common ladder logic commands. You'll note most of the buttons are grayed out, indicating they're not active at this time. Click the New button in the upper left-hand corner. The program asks us to select the device of interest from a drop-down menu. For this exercise, we'll be using a Tico SG2 10HRA PLR. Note this window gives a brief synopsis of the Tico SG2 10HRA PLR specifications. Navigate to this entry and press OK. The software takes us to a blank workspace. This is where we'll write our program. Note the workspace is limited to seven vertical columns, I'll call them A through G, and 300 numbered horizontal rows. Columns A, C, and E on the left are reserved for contact instructions, and column G on the right is reserved for coil output. Columns B, D, and F are reserved for wiring. Note the bottom menu now allows access to a selection of available contacts and coil functions. Additionally, note the left-hand side features a sort of cross-reference field showing the user what elements are being employed in a particular program. This list is especially handy for later referencing or troubleshooting purposes for a larger program. To add a contact or coil to the program, press the button for the contact or coil of interest and then click the desired destination on the workspace. Here I've added an I input instruction into rung 1 column A. A pop-up menu allows a user to select basic properties like operand number and make or break behavior. Additionally, tabs allow a user to toggle between alternate functions like timers, counters, and more. We'll examine these additional functions in later lectures. Let's add a make instruction examining input I2. Use the pull down menu to select operand number 2 and press OK. If you make a mistake, you can always double click the element to select and edit it, or one can delete it entirely. 
Note within Tico SG2 client programming software environment, the contacts are designated using ANSI CSA format. However, an actual device will display this program subtly different on the small LCD screen using device format, where a make instruction is designated using capital letters, and a break instruction, in contrast, is designated using lowercase letters. Let's add another make instruction examining input I3 into rung 1, column C. Note the software is smart enough to realize we want them wired together and inserts a wire in column B. Let's put an output Q1 in rung 1, column G. A pop-up menu allows the user to select basic properties like operand number or latching behavior. We'll examine these additional features in later lectures. For now, let's just select the default coil function for output Q1. The programming software places output Q1 in rung 1, column G. However, it doesn't do the wiring for us, since it's expecting another contact in rung 1, column E. Select the horizontal wire drawing tool, A. Don't ask me why they call it A, and insert a horizontal wire in rung 1, column E. If you dork up the wiring, or if the programming software ever assumes an incorrect connection, you can always delete it using the delete button in the bottom row and redraw it as desired. Our program is a series connection of two make instructions examining inputs I2 and I3 and yielding a coil output Q1. One can save this program for later editing and reuse. I'm going to call it demo program. Again, note the cross-reference list on the left-hand side produces a handy-to-use chart cataloging all contacts and coils utilized in this program. Asterisks indicate I2, I3, and Q1 are in use. One can also include comments describing the nature of inputs and outputs using the note end function on the bottom menu. Note I've included the comments normally close momentary contact red push button for I2, normally open momentary contact green push button for I3, and first pilot lamp for Q1. These comments are extremely helpful features and recommended work practices as our programs grow in size and complexity. The simulator button at the top allows a means of testing and verifying the functionality of a program before going live with real hardware in a production environment. When activated, the simulation workspace shows the status of the program ins and outs as dictated by the simulated input conditions. You'll note several windows open, notably Input Status Tool, Expand Analog, and AT Tool. Move the Input Status Tool into the center of the simulator workspace and push Expand Analog and AT Tool off to the side. We won't be using these tools for this exercise. The simulation utility offered by the Tico SG2 PLR client programming software is admittedly not especially robust. The simulator assumes all field input devices are electromechanically normally open. However, for the purposes of this application, this is most assuredly not the case. Note our comments indicate that the field input device attached to input I2 is intended to be electromechanically normally closed. We can work around this software limitation by closing the simulated field input device on input I2. Note the simulator indicates the simulated field input device attached to input I2 is now closed by highlighting it in red. Recall that the electromechanical nature of a field input device has absolutely nothing to do with how that input is logically instantiated in the program. Recall that a make instruction disallows logical continuity when the input experiences a logical zero and allows logical continuity when that input experiences a logical one. As dictated by the electromechanical normally closed nature of the simulated field input device attached to input I2, the normally closed red push button, input I2, would experience a logical 1 and allow logical continuity when the simulated field input device is in its deactivated normally closed state. When placed in its activated open state, it would receive a logical 0 and thus disallow logical continuity. In contrast, as dictated by the electromechanical normally open nature of the simulated field input device attached to input I3, the normally open green push button, input I3 would experience a logical zero and disallow logical continuity when the simulated field input device is in its deactivated normally open state. When placed in its activated closed state, it would receive a logical one and allow logical continuity. Start thinking now how output Q1 would respond to four different input scenarios. One, when both simulated field input devices are in their deactivated states. Two, when only the normally closed red push button attached to input I2 is actuated. Three, when only the normally open green push button attached to input I3 is actuated. And finally, four, when both buttons are actuated. If you're tracking, you should anticipate that output Q1 will be asserted when only the normally open green push button attached to input I3 is actuated. Let's see if the simulation verifies our hypothesis. When neither simulated field input device is actuated, 
The simulation utility indicates the make construction examining input I2 permits logical continuity. However, the make construction examining input I3 does not permit logical continuity onto the output and the output coil Q1 is de-energized. You note the simulation utility symbolizes those input conditions allowing logical continuity by highlighting them in bold green. Additionally, note the cross-reference list on the left-hand side indicates input I2 is experiencing a logical 1 by highlighting it with an asterisk. When only the simulated field input device attached to input I2, the normally closed red push button is actuated into the open condition, the simulation utility indicates that the make construction examining input I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is de-energized. When only the simulated field input device attached to input I3, the normally open green push button is actuated, the simulation utility indicates the series connection of the make constructions examining both inputs I2 and I3 permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is energized. When both the simulated field input devices are actuated, the simulation utility indicates the make construction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output regardless of the status of input I3 and output coil Q1 is de-energized. The simulation utility has thus verified the functionality of our program in response to our intended field input devices. We can now stop the simulator by pressing the stop button and save the program if we haven't done so already. Let's now transfer this program to an actual device and monitor its operation. To transfer the program to the device, power up the target Tico SG2 PLR, place it in stop mode, and return to the status window. Open the port on the front of the device and install the communications cable and plug the other end into your computer's USB port. Take note of which COM port the computer assigns the communications cable. In this case, my computer is using COM port 5. From the Tika SG2 client programming software, open the operation menu and choose link COM port on the bottom. From the pop-up menu, select the COM port of interest, in this case COM port 5, and press link. If everything proceeds as expected, you should get a thumbs up from the Tico SG2 client programming software that a communications link has been established. Now we need to write this program to our target device. From the Tico SG2 client programming software, open the operations menu and choose write near the middle. The software warns the user that previous data will be overwritten. Press OK. If everything proceeds as expected, you should get a thumbs up from the Tico SG2 client programming software that the program has been written to the target device. Note while connection is established to an actual device containing a valid program, one can remotely control and monitor the device's response to real-world field input devices. To do so, one must maintain the communications link and press Run in the Tico SG2 client programming software. The remote monitoring utility asks us if we wish to read data from the target device. Press OK. We're offered something similar to the simulation utility, only this time the field input devices aren't simulated but rather real-world field input devices really interacting with the real world. Note when neither button is actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the make instruction examining input I2 permits logical continuity. However, the make instruction examining input I3 does not permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is de-energized. When only the field input device attached to input I2, the normally closed red push button is actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the make instruction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is de-energized. When only the field input device attached to input I3, the normally open green push button is actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the series connection of the make instructions examining both inputs I2 and I3 permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is energized. When both the field input devices are actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the make instruction examining I2 does not permit a logical continuity onto the output regardless of the status of input I3, and output coil Q1 is de-energized. The remotely monitored PLC is behaving as anticipated to the real-world input. We can be reasonably certain that this program will function as intended. We can stop remote monitoring by pressing the quit button, and the communications link can be broken by unlinking the COM port in the operations menu and the PLC placed into service. All right, this about wraps up our brief introduction to the Tico SG2 client programming software. We familiarized ourselves with the software environment and used the software to write, save, edit, and manage programs, simulate programs, transfer programs to a device, and monitor a device running a program. 
Not only does the use of programming software like the Tico SG2 client programming software greatly simplify the program entry and editing process, the ability to work on a program offline without stopping the PLC reduces production downtime. Additionally, simulation makes it possible to test and verify functionality before going live with real-world hardware in a production environment. We'll make use of this software in later applications exercises to build and test some representative PLC programs. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.